Welcome back everybody to another Camping with Tony and Bruce, who's got stuff attached to his tail. Come here, Brucey, let me have a look what's on your tail. Oh, you've got gorse on there. Oh, if this is your first time ever watching my channel, this is Brucey. He's crazy. He knows that I've got to pull stuff out of the back of the car and set the tent up. So we're on the same spot where I had an epic fail and it, uh, there was a big storm and it absolutely destroyed the tarp and collapsed the tent and we had to sleep in the back of the car and it was awful. That was a bad night. But yeah, we're back at the same spot, Robin Hood Bay. It's a beautiful beach, stunning area, but the, it's cloudy, there's a bit of drizzle. I'm not sure what's going on. The wind is really, really strong. Um, I'm just tucked here out of it. It's blowing straight towards the camera. So what I want to do is stress test the tent that I've got with me, which is the North Face Wawona 6. Massive tent, tried it out a few weeks ago, uh, a couple of videos ago in a beautiful spot. Handled the rain, no problem, no leaking at all, but there was no wind, no wind. This time we got really strong wind, maybe gales. I'm not sure. So I want to test it out in these conditions. This should be uh, this should be brutal. So let's get it set up. What do you reckon, Brucey? Let's get the tent out. Yeah, I know. Let's get the tent out. And it is a beast of a tent. Hey, you helping? All right, so what I want to do is there's sort of like a front vestibule. Bruce, don't go in the fire. Come over here. There's a fire pit there and I have got some wood. So if, if the wind stops a bit, then uh, maybe we're going to fire tonight. So there's a, leave it, Bruce. Don't chase the bee. There's a front vestibule area that's got two entrances and I don't know how I want to do this but I'm thinking I actually want to have the front of the tent aiming that way. There's a window on the back so I can look out, but I think structurally the strongest part of the tent is the back. So if the wind is going to be howling against it, I'd rather that was at the back of the tent. Um, so I'm going to set it up facing out towards the camera now. So let's get on with this. Okay, so it comes with a bunch of pegs. Poles. I'm going to get the pole set up first. Bruce, leave that. Bruce, come here. Leave that. Bruce is playing in the fire pit. Now, it comes with these really heavy duty, as I've said before, massive DAC aluminium poles. Um, they should be able to withstand quite a battering. You know, North Face is uh, known for its quality. So let's get these poles set up first. Bruce! Come on, stay here. No. Come on, lie down.
Okay, that's all set up, right. Let's get the base set up. Actually, I've got a tarp to put down. I'm gonna put a tarp down as the ground sheet. I've got some really massive sand spike pegs, as well as these pretty rubbish pegs that come with the tent. So I'll use those. Bruce, for putting the guy lines down. It's not a massive tarp, but it's big enough to cover where the most of the footprint's gonna be. Actually, I don't think this is gonna blow away, so I don't need to peg it down. Now, I'm gonna have the back there, so I need to turn this around. Bruce, come out of the fire, come on, out of the fire. Bruce, out. You're being very naughty. He can't help himself. Right, this is a complicated bit. Working out, what's the back? Bruce, stop, stop, Bruce, stop. Come here, come on. When he gets like this, a bit of a nightmare. Come and lie down. I don't know what's been in that fire. Come and lie down. Come on, be a good boy. Lie down, down, right down. Stay there, good boy. Obviously someone's been cooking something in the fire. I don't want Bruce going in there, getting sick. Oh, I think I got this right the first time. Okay, I have. No, Bruce, stay, stay, lie down. Cheeky. Wow, this ground is really hard. I'll go around afterwards and bang all the pegs down with a hammer. Okay, let's put the poles in. Bruce, stay there, yeah? Good boy. So if anyone gets this tent, keep the poles flat first. Don't try and put the poles up one at a time. Thread them both through first. Much easier that way. It's because I'm talking that Bruce is walking off. Bruce, stay here. If I was just being quiet, he wouldn't keep walking off and trying out his luck. Bruce, stop it. Come back. Being very naughty. Right, let's put these poles up. So the ground is quite wet. It's not so bad. Okay. 
All right, not so bad. Okay, so we clip these big ones on first. Front pole. Um, how do you do this? Oh yeah. So I think it's this curved one, this square one. Not sure if it goes inside or outside. I think it's inside. Bruce, stay put. I just don't want you running off going down on the beach. Come on, lie down, lie down. Good boy. Okay, this is the right one. Must be. <laughs> Looks right. You know what? I don't think that is right. I don't think the square one is going to go in there. I think the square one goes in the other one because this fabric should be really tight. All right, first mistake. I've only set this tent up once before. But it is an easy tent to set up. Comparatively, it's easy. <laughs> Might look like I'm making a hash of it now. Right, let's try that again, shall we? Oh, that's better. Much better. Okay. It's looking good. Now, of course, if it was raining, <laughs> well, you'd have to do this all a lot quicker. I have tried to um, keep the outer on, <clears throat> but it just didn't work. Wow, this ground is hard. All right, that's looking good. Okay, let's get the uh, outer on.
Right now I'm fully expecting this to be a bit more tricky because it is windy. Last time it took me quite a while to work out which way around this goes, but there's got to be one of the one of the uh, poles goes through this bit. So this is the front here. Bruce, come and stay down. I know where you're going. So I think what you do is you clip it on the back first. Yeah, just got to find the clips. This one. I'm watching Bruce like a hawk. I don't know what he's up to. He's trying to do a prison break. Uh, I've got that the wrong way around. Oh, it is tricky, I'll tell you. It's not an even shape. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Okay. Right, we're getting somewhere now. Finally. I think the logo goes at the back here. Yeah. See, Bruce has wandered off already. Bruce, come back. Come on. Oh yeah. No, no, no. I know where you're going. What you're trying to do. Okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. I just can't remember what you do with this bit here. I think it clips under again. <laughs> This whole thing wants to take off now in the wind. So this is a good test. How easy is it to set up in the wind? Bruce, no, go back over there. Do not want you going in that fire pit. I yes, can spend the whole time on doing, I'm gonna spend the whole time with this thing telling Bruce not to go in the fire. It'd be a nightmare. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It might not look like it, but we are. All right, let's get this pole in. I don't know if you can see Bruce. Oh, good boy. Flying by the tent. Okay. Caught cool, on something. Right, this would be a lot easier with two people. Definitely. Beggars can't be choosers. It is still doable, completely doable with one person. I have done it before, just not in the wind, that was all. 
I don't know if that's right. Doesn't look right. It's gotta be another thing to stick this into. And here it is, okay. There we go. Does come with instructions. <laughs> Who needs them? Except for me. All right, progress, check it out. So I think what you do is you just have to stake out the bottom bits and then you do this guy line. Now I have actually got, I've got a hammer in the back here, along with a bunch of firewood. Okay, big hammer. So what's needed, Bruce, is a big hammer. Thor. Well, I'll just tap down the others, make sure they're in the right spots, yeah. Okay. We're getting there. Yeah, I don't like these old school pegs. Okay. And then, take the front down. All right, let's do the guy lines. Uh, dump the pegs. I think I mentioned in the last video that I did of this. It needs more pegs. Could do with another four or five pegs.
It's looking pretty tight. Not bad at all. Right, so I'm going to peg the outer windows. Let's give it some stability. Yeah. Yeah, so it's got these flappy windows on the side. But I don't think I'll be lifting these. So I'll just use them as ventilation. We'll keep this thing pretty rigid. And then the second one here. Wow, this ground is solid. <sighs> and rocky. Yeah, definitely buy a whole new load of pegs, ditch the pegs it comes with, and I think you'll be better off. Because these pegs are pretty rubbish, considering it's North Face. Right, we're looking good. So, Open the windows, the vents. It's one on this side, one on the other side. Anyone who's my channel knows I hate guy lines. Oh yeah, we're in business. All right, let's see what we've got going on inside. Now this thing is a palace. Brucey loves this tent, don't you Brucey? Are you making yourself at home already? <laughs> he wants in. He wants to go inside. This tent gets the seal of approval from Brucey. Hello, don't scratch, don't scratch. Calm down, calm down, 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 down. Now, Brucey, come on out of here. Making a mess. I know what you want. You want to go in, don't you? Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you for my kiss. Yep, this is pretty awesome. Now, Just a couple of bits to do in here. Yay. All right, I've got to start loading everything in. See? So I've brought my floor mat, one of a floor mat in from the car. I can't remember, a few people made that suggestion last time after I said I forgot to bring a mat. Why didn't I just take it out of the car? I was like, oh yeah. But I have an excuse. My excuse was that I didn't think of it. <laughs> I love this tent. Absolutely love this tent. Now, whether I'll love it or not after tonight and the strong wind, I don't know. I've only put two side guys out. There are more guy lines. So what I might do is just unpack everything first, then get the extra guy lines done. So I need to start bringing everything in.
firewood. Gas bottle for my heater, my Mr. Buddy. Got some fatwood, wool blanket. I'm gonna lay this down in there. Some water, Bruce's food. Cooker, table. My food or my dinner, breakfast, everything else. Uh, there are no bears or wild animals or anything dangerous in New Zealand at all, which is where we are, New Zealand. So you can have everything in the tent. My Mr. Buddy, is it called Mr. Buddy? Portable Buddy, Mr. Heater. This thing will be a godsend tonight. <laughs> you see him following me back and forth. Sorry, Brucey. Oh. Right, I've got Bruce's blanket and Bruce's bed. It's dog bed. Hello, my lovely. Hello. We'll go and play on the beach in a minute. Let me just finish unpacking. Bruce is so happy to be camping. He likes nothing more. My duvet. Okay, let's get this palace set up. Okay. Right, I'm gonna put the blanket down first. So this is my uh, woolly mammoth wool blanket. Just makes it a bit more homey. Right, my bed. Now sometimes I bring uh, my inflatable pad my thermarest or something like that, but it's just more hassle. I can't be bothered this time. So this is the Coleman Big Sky Bed Deluxe. I don't know anywhere where you can get this anymore, which is a shame because it's really good. And it's so comfortable. It's sprung, comes with a mattress. takes a lot of weight. Yeah, it's really good. Big Sky Deluxe. It's my duvet. My quilt. And yeah, I know it's purple and it's one hell of a color. It's enlightened equipment. I'll definitely be having this undone tonight because this is rated for minus 12. Way more comfortable than a sleeping bag as long as it's not windy, drafty. Now draft does come in from this through these windows, but should be all right. I have got a window in the back. Uh, I might open that actually, just so I can look out. So it's got fly mesh on it. And there are sand flies here. 
Sand flies are like mosquitoes. Really annoying. Right, got Brucey's bed. Hey Bruce, do you want to come on your bed? You're going to lie down on your bed. I've got his blanket. There's no way he's going to need this. Just isn't. But nice to have it anyway, because if he doesn't use it, I might use it. But he'll kick that off straight away tonight. It's way too mild for him. Right, let me get my pillow. Okay. Pillow. PJs. We are sorted. Whew. Excellent. He's on his bed. He's happy as can be. I don't know if you can see him properly. Yeah. So. I'll give you a rundown of this tent again, just in case you didn't see the last one. If you didn't see the one where I tested this before, I thoroughly recommend you go and check that one out. I had a great time in that one. Um, so, everything above this line here is mesh. It's all ventilation. The outer is fully waterproof, um, and all this is waterproof as well. Uh, three pockets here, four pockets up here, pocket in each corner there as well. I mean, crazy amount of pockets. And that's about it. Vestibule at the front, tons of space. Absolutely love this tent. Right, I need to go and tie up the outside. Just check that I've strapped all the poles. I haven't quite finished strapping some of them. So I'm gonna get the jobs done and bring you back for that. What do you reckon? So, uh, got everything sorted. A couple of lamps. Got my camera bag down here. I've got my i4 way portable generator thingamajig for power. Um, got a different, just bulk standard camp chair with me this time because the. Uh, my other camp chair that I usually, my backpack chair, my Trekology one, it's just a bit of a faff and I suddenly realise I don't need it. Don't, you know, just use this. This is always in the back of the car. So, yeah, we're all good. Now, the rain hasn't kicked in at all, luckily. It might. The wind has picked up again. But I've guyed everything out. Yeah, I've got all the guy lines running. Um, it's all good. <laughs> I love this tent. I really love this tent. North Face Wawona 6. This could turn out to be the best. Just settle a bit, Bruce. I know. I'm, I know. I did take you for a little walk. We'll go for a walk in a minute. Go and lie down. Lie down. On your bed. No, no, no. On your bed. This could be the best tent, yeah, that I've ever owned. But we will see tonight. It's... It's moving quite a bit, but it is windy. It is really windy. You probably can't tell just because I've got the wind muff on the microphone, but yeah, it is very windy. So far, the sand flies haven't been that bad. In fact, there's none in here at all. But what I will do is I saw hunker down with Steve had one of these camping with Steve. So I got one as well, because I love to copy. It's the Thermocell. Um, this is, I got one that I could go camping with. Do you screw this in? Yeah. Instead of the other one, which is, you know, too big, she said. Um, so yeah, I got the smaller one. Now, I can't 
can't remember if Steve, I think Steve swears by these. If you don't know who I'm talking about, Steve Wallace, Camping with Steve. He's a, he's a legend. He's the legend. Um, he's not for everyone, but I enjoy his stuff. But he camps in just the worst conditions you can imagine. Okay, so what you do is you put the, uh, oh, here comes the rain, I think. You put the repellent in, you turn it on, and you start it. You're looking for a flame. Oh, there. Yep, she's going. There's a little window at the end. And what that does is that will heat that mat and that will give off, hopefully, once it gets hot, it is glowing. Yep, it's got butane gas in it. It will heat that mat and put off anything from uh, coming anywhere near it. It's vented, so I read that you can put it on just normal surfaces. I'll put it on that plastic top. So what do I love about this tent? I love the fact it's got this window at the back. <coughs> um, excuse me. Whereas the, the Napier, <laughs> please, go, please, if you want to see a, a rubbish tent, go and watch my uh, camping in the rain with a car SUV tent, a big blue thing weighs about 25 kilos is a nightmare to set up i think it took me over an hour to set up oh yeah here comes the rain so this is going to be a test i'm going to put this window up now because the rain is coming in so let me deal with that hello brucey you can do this from inside, but yeah, why did I, why have I come out? I have no idea. There you go. Oh, she's a rocking. So the wind is actually blowing this way. So what I'm going to do is close up this door and open the other door uh, and look out that way because I think what's happening is it's filling up this void with wind. Oh, so let me do that now. I might have guided this out too much.
Yeah, I guide it out a little bit too tight. I should have guided it when I had the doors closed. That was silly. All right. All right, let's get comfy. Oh, that's better. No. Okay, I'm out of the wind. Out of the rain. The tent is moving. <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting night. Don't attempt this. I honestly, I know that it's windy. Last night we had gale force winds and I, oh, I don't know if this would manage to take it or not. I'm not sure, but I don't recommend deliberately going out and trying it like I am. This is just what I do. Fantastic though. I, I just love this tent. I love this tent. It's a brilliant piece of kit. Right, I think what I need to do is, is it beer o'clock? I think it is beer o'clock. I think Bruce wants to go and have a play. But I'm gonna have a beer first, Brucey. Oops. Yes, Bruce, all my food is in here, I know. Big cool box here. So we've got a uh, Cassell's New Zealand Nec Nectaron IPA. Hoppy, intense tropical fruit aromas. It's been hopped at multiple stages. Don't know what that means. 6.1%. I always get asked, why do you tap the top of the cam? It's a couple of reasons. I've, it's just a thing can't help it now I've been doing it for so long and also it stops it frothing over now, there is some history to it if you look it up someone did mention it before uh, there is a reason to do it or why it's done cheers everybody thanks for coming along on this trip oh yeah oh and also I'd like to say a shout out thank you to the sponsor of this video uh, who very kindly sponsored me is Squarespace and I was building a website and their system seemed the best so thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this website uh, this 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 video and for helping me with my website building it uh, getting it set if you guys need uh, to get a website done for anything thoroughly recommend Squarespace go to um, squarespace.com slash ab camping to get uh, a discount code and a free trial. It's well worth it. Now, what I can see is smoke coming off of my thermocell. Yeah, that's smoking. It's perfectly cold underneath, but it's giving off a lot of smoke. So I'm hoping that will do the job. Excellent. Bruce, get out of the fire. Bruce, Bruce. Out, come on. I'm gonna take you down to the beach in a minute. Come and lie down, come and lie down. Lie down. It's a good boy. Ah. Oh. So a lot's been going on. New Zealand, North Island, Auckland, and Hamilton. Auckland is the biggest city in New Zealand. Four million people is still in lockdown. Borders are closed. People can't come and go. I think it's been two, over two months for them now. Crazy, crazy situation. Even with so many people vaccinated, they still keep locking them down. Uh, absolutely nuts. You've got to wonder at what point 
is this government just going to accept it and learn to live with it, just like everybody else has. But whatever, we've now uh, the only country, I think, in the world that's doing lockdowns. I don't think anybody else is doing them. Australia has just opened up. And this government just can't seem to sort its act out. So yeah, to all, uh, all my friends and relatives and stuff up on the North Island, I hope you get out of your lockdown soon. I'm looking forward to traveling. I want to go to Australia. Definitely want to go to the States. Got a trip booked for next year as well to the States. We're going to the Grand Canyon. Can't wait. And we're going to do Vegas. My son is desperate to do that. Oh, and let me show you something else that my lovely wife Anne got me and Brandon, my son. <laughs> Just in case you can't see it. Oh yeah, Tony, legend since 1971, husband since 2000, and dad since 2005, and that's a cigar. What a fantastic present from my lovely wife, Anne. Love you, darling, and my fantastic son, Brandon. Love you, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> It's unfortunate that that name is, <laughs> is the name for that, that saying right now. And when your son is actually called Brandon, there's, it's, you're just hearing it everywhere now. And it's so funny. Bruce, don't go skulking off to the fire. I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Come and settle, come on. Good boy. So a few things on this trip that I've got. I've got a remote control camping fan. What is this? I bought this, I got this on Amazon, Frizz Coal. It's got a remote control. It hangs up, it's got a light, it's got everything. It's got a, it's, it's cordless, so it's rechargeable. It's got a battery bank built in. You can hang it up. Now, the reason for this is that when you have one of these portable heaters, you need to circulate the air because otherwise it all just sits at the top and eventually escapes out the top. So tent fan. We'll see how that goes later. Got some great food to cook. My usual sort of comfort food. Nothing too exotic. Um, what else we got going on? That's about it. Yeah. Mainly this is a trial of this tent in the wind. Just see how it goes. Waves crashing. What a lovely spot. I just need this rain to stop a bit and then it's not, it's just drizzle. Um, and then we'll, I'm going to take him out for a bit of a run and a play on the beach. It's too windy to put the drone up to show you where I am, I think. But uh, you know what? Maybe I'll give the drone a try. Let's see if the drone works in this weather. Feel like a burger.
Ah, now, sand flies are coming in here. So let me move my little heater out here. See if it works. I mean, I'm a bit dubious about its effect, but especially as it's windy. Hey, but it works for Steve, so who knows? Oh, I think I'm going to make a cheeseburger. Save one for Bruce's dinner as well. Actually, I'll give Bruce, I want to give Bruce some of mine. Yeah. It's not dinner time yet, but I am starving. So my view out is of the mist on the trees and it's, it's pretty. I'd rather be looking out there at the sea. Um, so I might actually open that rear window again. Just so I can see out, because the rain has stopped again, so. We're ready. So I'm going to chop a little bit off for Brucey just so we can have a little snack. So Bruce is on a pretty strict diet at the moment. It's just because um, he's been having some dodgy guts. You gotta keep an eye on that sort of thing. So as much as it's nice to spoil him, it's not good for him in the long run. So temperature-wise, it is, you know what? I haven't got a clue. So what I'll do is, I'll hang my thermometer up outside My little thermometer, I'll hang it up outside and then I'll know what the temperature is. But I can see my breath, so it's not actually that warm.
Now I'm gonna have cheese on mine. Some cheddar slices. Got brioche burger buns. Yeah, you can definitely see my breath now. Temperature's suddenly dropped. But I'm really warm in here because the wind's not getting to me. So it's not a big deal. Got my heater just in case. Right, I think Bruce's is ready. So what I'll do is he can have his out of this pan, but I need it to cool down first. It's too hot for him now. These are delicious, delicious Angus beef burgers. I'm gonna let that cool down over there. Oh yeah. Move this out of the way so I can sit down properly. Cheeseburgers. Bruce is ready for a bit of burger as well. Uh, view out there. That's my view. Up there with the mist in the trees. Look at this setup. Comfy bed, a view, my doggy, and all this space out here. It's huge. And there's the thermocell. Seems to be doing the job. So with my burgers, I'm going to have some proper English mustard. Coleman's English mustard. Lashings. I can feel his eyes on me. Very unnerving. <laughs> Some tomato ketchup. Heinz, of course. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not gonna ruin this with any pickles or vegetables or green things or anything like that. 
just a pure cheeseburger with mustard and ketchup. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. But first, I'm gonna let Brucey Go on then, Brucey. Good boy. He can have his. We're savoring it for four seconds. Bon appetit, everybody. I moved the table out of the way so I could put my legs out. But look who's come and parked himself right here. I need to move him. Bruce, what's in there? Yeah, that's better. This burger is delicious. So this is my idea of comfortable camping trip. Great dog, great tent, great food, great location. Nice beer. This is living the dream. The only thing that would make this better as if I was so isolated, I knew no one else would turn up. But this is a camping area. This is a Friday. I'm sure someone else is bound to turn up. But I do love my isolation, being away from everyone. but I can't complain. I'm out doing it. Mm. <laughs> Cheers again, everybody. I mowed that first one down. I'm gonna take my time with the second one and savor it. I think it's time, uh, time to light the fire. And also I've got to give Bruce his dinner. But let me get the fire cranking first. So I've got some fat wood. It's a great fire lighter, fat wood.
should have done what Steve, hunkering down, camping down, camping with Steve does, and what a big blowtorch. This oh, big gust of wind blew it out. Just need to get this hot enough. Yeah, I've been chilling out. Bruce and I went for a little walk on the beach, which was nice. He's got that out of his system now. I think he was a bit desperate to get out there. The rain hasn't started up. Which isn't a bad thing. Got a mixture of wood here. Got some pine. I've got some eucalyptus. All right, let's get Bruce's dinner on. Want your dinner, Bruce? Hey, you want your dinner? Oops. Clumsy. Hang on. Go on then, good boy. It's a bit chilly, so it's about, oh, it's about, uh, I think it's eight degrees centigrade. Don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. You'll have to uh, Google it or ask Siri. Hey Siri, what is eight degrees centigrade in Fahrenheit? There you go. Maybe that set your phones off. <laughs> As you can see from the smoke, the wind it's primarily blowing sort of towards, just over towards the camera, but it's swirling quite a bit, you see, as usual. But once this gets hot, smoke should go, should be fine. I think this calls for a glass of wine. See, if you're going to do this, you've got to do it properly. How are you doing? Go on then, you can go and play. Oh, so I've got a, hello. Got a bottle of uh, Elephant Hill. It's a New Zealand Hawke's Bay wine. Um, Merlot Malbec Syrah. I've had this before and it is nice. Yeah, we chilled out for quite a while. Went for a long walk, but now the tide is really up, so it's difficult to walk down on the beach. Bruce, don't go near the fire. Come on, out of there. Who says camping can't be civilized? Bruce, away, no, enough. I know what you're doing, go on, out of it. I'm borrowing Bruce's blanket. He's not cold. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again for coming along on this. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's really good. I'm not expecting this fire to give off uh, 
tons of heat, but just psychologically it's nice. Have those flames. The wind is so strong that it's just whipping that fire up into a frenzy, it's amazing. But you know what this calls for? It's cigar time. To know me is to camp with me and have a cigar with me. Monte Cristo, number four. As you can see, it's capped. So to the person that insists on commenting saying, I'm making it all up, it's not Monte Cristo. Well, there you go. <laughs> Some of the comments I get, honestly. One thing I've noticed is as my channel has got bigger, um, the trolling has really got bad. Bruce! And I don't know why that is. Yeah, very strange. A lot more trolling. Maybe it's just because I've got more viewers now. Oh, Bruce, come on. I know where he's gone. There's another fire pit over there. He's gone to see what's in it. So you might see him before I do. I have no idea where he is. Cigar and red wine. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for coming, really. Mm. Oh, and I want to thank everyone now oh, here he is. I'd like to thank everyone uh, who has contributed drinks, treats to us and joined our channel. Um, all your names are coming up here now. Uh, it just um, means so much to, to me that there are people that uh, value and appreciate our channel enough that they'd want to do that. Um, and buying us treats. Bruce, be careful, mind the sparks. Bruce, come around here, come on. Because the wind is blowing the sparks all over the place. And yeah, just again, thank you very much. And for those who joined the YouTube channel, just wow, thank you so much. It means so much to us, it really does. And we'll carry on doing these videos. Hey, 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 come on, come away. I know what you're thinking, away from the fire. So yeah, we'll keep doing these videos because keep watching them. And uh, Bruce, enough, 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 out, 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 go on, away, away, Bruce. Good, okay, that's it, good boy. <laughs> He's got to interrupt, isn't he? So yeah, thank you very much, everybody, it means a lot. My last video was um, in the snow. And I was up there in <laughs> shorts and people were like, what are you, crazy? Um, what I didn't explain was that for a three hours walk, three and a half hours walk up that mountain with a backpack on, um, you sweat like crazy. There's nothing you can do about it. It's a massive hike. And if you had pants on, trousers on, you'd sweat even more. So shorts, you know, a great way to just keep the temperature down, not sweat so much. Obviously, you then get to the top and you're there and you got your shorts on. So people were a bit confused by that. And yeah, it was like minus two and I had shorts on. And it was blowing out, but that's why. Because you watch the video and you just see a minute and I'm suddenly there at the top of the mountain. But that was, uh, three and a, that was a good three and a half hours to get up there and with a 25 kilo pack. I don't think there's many people out there that can do that. Straight up, all the way up. There's a climb from 500 meters to 1500 meters. 
and there was a big temperature difference from where I started to where it was up top. But as soon as I changed, I was fine, except for my horrible cramp. If you did watch that video, you'll see that I got horrendous cramping in my left calf muscle. It was awful. Uh, but I chugged an electrolyte drink when I got in the tent and that really helped. Actually, I'm surprised. I can feel the heat from this fire. Didn't think I'd be able to. So there's red hot coals at the bottom of it. I think we need to stoke it up as much as we can. really get the heat off this thing. You know what? Let me get my table. Now, the astute of you will remember this is the spot <laughs> where I broke this table. And yeah. What happened was, it was a tarp. I had a, a tent. I think it was the One Tigress Cosmito backpacking tent. And I had an AquaQuest tarp. And an almighty storm came through that hadn't been predicted. Ah, uh, smoke. Yeah, that's me. Um, and it punctured everything, it broke the tarp, pancaked the tent, it was complete catastrophe. And I ran to go and fix it and I tripped over the table and broke, bent the table. Yeah, that was horrendous. But that was in this exact same spot. That storm, little did I know, got worse that night. And then the following day, uh, devastated the entire region. 350 millimeters of rain in less than 24 hours. And uh, just cataclysmic damage where I live. The main road where I live was washed out. We suffered significant damage on our property, on our driveway. It was horrendous, yeah. We're still waiting to get it fixed. 
But yeah, that storm was absolutely awful. And um, yeah, I can't believe I went out camping in it. If I'd had the right tent, it would have probably withstood it. But the amount of rain would have been at this spot would have been awful. And besides, I wouldn't have been able to get back home because the road was gone. I think it took them um, 48 hours to cut a channel, a one lane path through. So Anne, my wife would have been stuck at home uh, with my son, Brandon, and uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to get to them. So it's a good job I did cut that trip short. I was meant to do a two nighter. Uh, so I cut it short and went home. It was a good job I did. So, even though we live by the sea, we live in the sounds. So it's very calm all the time. You don't hear water at all. Whereas this is open ocean. Straight out that way is the North Island of New Zealand. This is the roughest water in the Tasman Sea, I'd say. The Cook Strait. Google it, Cook Strait weather conditions, the waves, oh, the swell, everything can get really bad out there. So he's not used to that noise. He's getting used to it, but if there's some big waves, pounding waves, he suddenly looks up. But you can see he's really warm. He's spread out like that in the grass. That means he's toasty. If he was curled up, I'd put this blanket on him as well. But Eight degrees for him? Nah, that's nothing. I mean, his coat is amazing. He lies out in the snow and he's perfectly happy. So, the heat from the fire, it's nice. I can really feel that now. Wine, cigar, what's not to like? It seems to be that when I've got this tent, it's the only time nothing ever goes wrong. The last time I had this tent, absolutely nothing went wrong. It was all perfect. It's amazing. Camping with Tony and Bruce and nothing goes wrong. That should be a different channel. So I had those burgers earlier. That wasn't meant to be my dinner, but I'm still stuffed. They were so filling. So that was my dinner. I've got some Walker's, Walker's shortbread that I'm gonna have later. I love Walker's shortbread. It's the only one I like.
If you don't know it, try it. Scottish Walker's shortbread. It's absolutely delicious. So buttery. In fact, I might have to have one now. Now I've talked myself into it. And while the smoke is blowing in this direction, check it out. Walker's very buttery shortbread. I can't believe how good this fire is. Great success. Mm. <laughs> the combination of flavors of the wine, the shortbread in the cigar, something else. Oh, I didn't even see him behind me there. Yeah, Brucey. Who would like to be here now? It's cold, but not too cold. Windy, but not bad. Lovely spot, listening to the ocean. 
roaring fire. Fantastically comfortable tent to get into tonight that's heated. Please leave a comment who'd like to be here with me now. I mean, I could probably have quite a few of you here. Well, I could fit four in there easily. I mean, it's, you know, got to say, it's enormous, she said. I think this is the perfect setup. The only thing I would probably bring, if I thought it was gonna rain heavily, is a tarp and some poles, extendable telescopic poles that I have. Um, and I would set those up outside the vestibule and have a extended roof just to give a bit more space. You're right, Brucey. What's the matter? He's, he's happy. I don't know what's triggered him, but he's happy. Yeah, I think if I got um, another one of those beds, I think Anne would be happy. She'd definitely do this, definitely. Maybe if it was a bit warmer, but she'd be up for it, if you know what I mean. No, I'm just feeling a couple of drops of rain. It would be a shame if I had to go in. But it is so big in there that it doesn't matter. But it is nice sitting out that sound that fire this is really nice this is this is my idea of beach camping okay we're not on the beach the beach is down there but you couldn't camp down there it's way too dangerous it's all rocks stones sorry pebbles but this is a beach camp i'm feeling a bit more rain you got enough water bruce Hey, I'm so happy. What is, what's making you so happy? I think I've got to bring Anne here. Yeah. On a nice day when it's going to be a nice evening. I think she'd love it here. Sitting out in the chairs, in a glass of wine. She loves the water. Loves the water. Loves the sea. To sit here with that sound, looking out at it, she'd be mesmerized. Brucey, what's the matter with you? He's caught scent of something. Not sure what it is. Maybe a deer, something like that. So this is the time of day that deer would be coming out. It's just coming into dusk. I know it's, it looks fairly bright on the camera, but it is getting dark now. Um, so there's a possibility we might see a deer. But not with Bruce here. <laughs> I mean, it did bark like crazy, it would run off. What is it, Bruce? What's the matter? What do you see? What is it?
Hey, what is it? It's all right. It might just be the sound of the waves. It's messing with his hearing. So he can't do his early warning, I hear something detection. So maybe he's just playing. I'm sure they'll be full of comments from border collie experts that know exactly why he's a bit triggered at the moment. But he has these little moments like this. So I think as far as weather goes, yeah, it is, there's a few drops of rain. It looks like it's raining out at sea, which is coming this way, but it won't be heavy. There's nothing heavy forecast. There's no mobile signal here. So I can't tell what's gonna happen. Um, very, very small amount of signal. So it's really hard to gauge. And the wind was meant to slowly die down, I think, We've had the worst of it now. Just as I said that, a big gust comes through. I was thinking of parking the car, the truck, right up against the tent, um, upwind, to help block any wind that might hit the tent. But then I thought, well, hang on. I'm trying to test this thing in high wind, see how it copes with the wind. So that defeats the object. I know. Ideally, you would do that. You would, uh, there's a hedgerow all the way along there that's a much better place to camp uh, to protect yourself from the wind and the tent, and, you know, from the, the rain and stuff, but to stop the wind slamming into the tent. But I'm testing the equipment. I want to see how it holds up. So I want to expose it to wind, to the elements. I know this is not what you're meant to do. Believe me, <laughs> if I was here with Anne, would be behind that hedgerow. Yeah. Again, I get a lot of comments like that. Why are you doing that? Obviously it's gonna be bad, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's what I do. I need to test this stuff. I need to see if it can cope. So when I do go somewhere and I'm reliant on it, I know it's not gonna fail. Testing it at home, that doesn't work. You gotta expose it and see. And I kind of trust North Face. I would hope they can handle moderate to strong winds. It seems fine so far. It's got enough guy out, hasn't it, Brucey? Mm -hmm.
It's so nice to be able to bring your own wood for a fire. <laughs> Those who follow my channel know that this is what I struggle with, is decent firewood. When you're up in the uh, tops or in the, in the bush, beech wood, it's quite damp. Tons of smoke. It really, really gets piping, piping hot with no smoke. Whereas just to bring some, uh, some cuts from home that you know is seasoned and bone dry makes such a difference. The heat coming off this thing is, is immense. And I'm sitting like a meter and a half away from it. And it's warm. Hey, Brucey. Hey. What you doing? Come here. Here, round here. Hey. Oh, and let me know what you all think of my logo, Refresh, AB Camping. Bruce is a bit chubbier in that, in the new logo. Many of you have asked why have I had to remove the word outdoors. It's just AB Camping now. It used to be AB Outdoors and Camping. Then it became AB Camping and Outdoors. Now it's just AB camping. A lot of questions about that. Why have I had to remove the term outdoors? Um, look, it, it, I can't scientifically say one way or another why, um, but it appears that uh, outdoor channels are affiliated with certain um, according to Google, outdoor channels are affiliated with certain political views. There's nothing political at all about my channel whatsoever. I'm just camping and going out into the outdoors. But there are trigger words and uh, outdoors is one of those words and others have suffered their views have dropped dramatically because YouTube isn't promoting their content anymore. So I thought I would just play it safe and remove outdoors. That's all it is, just from others' experience. 
Um, yeah, there definitely seems to be something happening out there, along with the sort of bushcraft terminology and stuff like that. Just erring on the side of caution, that's all. Nothing else. And to be honest, all I do is camping videos. That's all I do, these long format camping videos, testing equipment, and bringing you along for what is a real camp. Not 20 minutes, not 30 minutes, uh, because you're, you're here overnight. You're here much longer than that. So 30 minutes doesn't cover it. So I'm camping and I'm bringing you along for a full show. This is what camping is like. You know, pros and cons, the good points and the bad points. So I just decided to simplify it and just call it AB camping because that's all I do anyway. I don't focus on military stuff, outdoor stuff, you know, like bushcrafty stuff. That's all just, to, if I do any bushcraft, it's really, really minor stuff that anyone can do. And that's the point. I'm not doing anything that uh, you couldn't do, honestly. Do I have a, I, I've got a lot of experience, but I do try and just do stuff that anyone can do to make it relevant, yeah. So that's the only reason. Remove the word outdoors, simplifies it, AB camping, much neater. Check out the logo and see what you think. What do you think, Brucey? And you're front and center in the logo. It's all about you. It's the Bruce channel. It should just be called Bruce's Camping. He's triggered. I didn't get to have a cigar on my last trip up in the snow. Because I was stuck in the tent. I didn't have a tarp. I was really bummed out about that. Because <laughs> that's my thing. Chilling, enjoying, enjoying camping. I didn't enjoy that camping trip because I was stuck in the tent. Okay, the rain is coming down now. So I've got to move everything in. I'm going to move you into the tent. So temperature, yeah, eight degrees out there. That's nice. Brucey, where are you going? Go on, on your bed. On your bed, go on. Where are you going? Oh, you're going in. Where are you going? Are you gonna go on your bed? Come on, on your bed. On your bed. Brucey, you wanna go here? Here, what's this? Is that your bed? So, I've got my Mr. Buddy heater cranking away, I've got my fan above it, and that's blowing the air straight at me. And that's nice. I might go even closer. He won't stay put. Okay, so he's lying out in the rain. Oh yeah, yeah, he's mad. Which means I'm gonna have to towel him off. <laughs> oh well, is what it is. Just a, a bit of rain, nothing too bad. And the wind has picked up as well. A 
this is going to be interesting to see if this tent copes the way I hope it does. So as I said before, last time I used this tent, it would be better if these sides weren't mesh. Better if, these, if they carried on with the waterproof material all the way up to here. Just the, the sides, here and there. Um, the reason for that is that uh, if you keep the doors open, or one door like I've got there, if there is some rain, it comes in a bit sideways, it's going to go straight through that mesh. So it would be nice. And this is the second generation of this tent. So the chances of them fixing it anytime soon are zero. But yeah, so change this out to just waterproof fabric. Um, I would say maybe even, you could even, they should even lift the mesh line up another foot all the way around. Yeah. You just have this waterproof, windproof fabric up another foot. Because uh, a lot of breeze comes in through these two side vents, these two side windows, a lot of breeze. Other than that, it's a fantastic tent. Well, it is a fantastic tent. Not other than that, it is a fantastic tent. I just, I would tune it a bit more. Yeah. Not to stop rain, uh, I'm confident of that, but it's to stop the breeze. Wow, the wind is really, I don't know if you can tell, but it is, it is moving. Yeah, it's really moving. Bruce is out here going nuts. Brucey, Bruce, hey, come in here. Come on, come in. I don't want you out there in the rain. Come on your bed. Hey, on your bed. Good boy. Ah, 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 on your bed. Good boy. This is nice with this heater. Really nice. So I'm looking out. This is open here. I'm looking out at the uh, at the fire. Yeah, my view. Mr. Buddy. Or Buddy, Mr. Heater. Got my wine, not much left. I've turned the thermocell off, don't need it. There's my little fan. So that's blowing the heat straight at me. I've made him go on his bed. He's not happy, but there you go. Here's my bed. Camera set up over there. Yeah, just looking at the fire. It's going out a bit now. And everything is rocking in the tent. Yeah, it's really blowing. But that's okay. I think it should be fine. Let me zoom out a bit so you can see. There you go. It's coping fine. Isn't it, Brucey? You're right. He wants to go out and play, but ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, no. On your bed, Bruce, no. On your bed. It's raining. I want you dry. He's had enough fun. He's been playing so much. He's been on the beach. He's had a great time. He's all triggered. I just want him to chill. Okay. Yeah, so. There's a lot of movement in here. I'm confident. I'm confident in this tent. I've guided it out. It's very taut. 
I think it would take a lot to affect this tent. And when I say a lot, I mean a full on storm to weaken it anywhere. So I'm pretty confident. Which makes the change. Cheers, again. All right, everybody. I am gonna just chill to the sound of the ocean. Relax in front of the fire. I'm so warm in front of this thing. This is giving off heaps, heaps of heat. And especially putting the fan here and blowing that heat straight at me. It's brilliant. So I'm gonna chill out and come back to you at bedtime. Okay, it's starting to come down now. It's rain, if you can hear it. It's difficult to hear anything over the noise of the waves. Maybe you can hear that. Yeah, it's raining. I'm a bit worried about this vent, these vents on the side and basically rain blowing up inside, but should be okay. The big question is this window. Can it, is it waterproof? You know, is the zip waterproof? Well, we will find out because the wind is really blowing against that side of the tent. Yeah, we'll find out. I mean, look how much space I've got. If I walk all the way to the back here, look at all that. It's amazing. Hey, Brucey. Hey. Huge amount of space. I'm so toasty as well. I'm not even sitting in the tent. I'm sitting out here in the vestibule with my Brucey. Oh, it's lying down in front of the fire. Now that is a first. I don't think it's because he wants the heat. I think it's because there's a shadow and he's enjoying that. He's gonna get hot lying by the fire. Careful, Bruce, that's really hot. Brucey, what are you doing? I don't like you there. Come on, come on your bed. On your bed, Bruce. Come on, on your bed. Good boy. It's not because you want the heat. I, I know that 100%. But, but you can't lie on my feet. I want to put my legs out. Oh, he can't help himself. <laughs> oh, you're hot lying in front of the fire. Too hot. Maybe it's a novelty. It's the novelty of the fire, maybe. Whoa. It's blowing. It's blowing. Yeah. The whole tent is moving. Oh, please. I am confident with this, but <laughs> I just hope it holds up because I don't want to spend the night in the car. Do you want to spend the night in the car, Brucey? Hey, my lovely. Do you want to spend the night in the car? No. I will be putting his bed, which is here right now, I'll be putting it right beside my bed later. Because that's what he's like. Oh, I see. He wants out. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get out. You see, if I left him to his own devices, he'd sneak under that little gap and he'd be out of here. He knows something's going on out there. The rain. And he loves the rain. Rain and snow. The two things he loves. I've got to keep an eye on him. Because if I... If I don't keep an eye on him, he'll be out. Definitely. Brucey, you're staying in. That grass is wet just there on the other side of you, on the other side of the tent. All right. Come back to your bedtime. <laughs> but I'm having a good time, I have to say. I'm enjoying this tent, as usual. See you at bedtime. Oh, it's moving. I don't know if you're picking that up, but it, it's really moving. 
Fingers crossed. Well, almost bedtime. Just been uh, sitting here chilling, watching a movie with my Brucey. He doesn't need this on him at all, but I put it on him and he just drifts off to sleep. Like a comforter. I've got the heater running over here and the fan behind it. It's super cozy. I could take this off probably. Everything is sealed in now. Very relaxed. The rain is gentle. You can't hear it because of the noise of the waves. Um, but it's pretty, you know, gentle and constant. But it's quite nice. So, just watching a movie, I'm going to finish up this movie and then it's time for bed. Finish my wine, it's all gone. Um, this is so indulgent. This is camping. Well, it's bedtime. <laughs> it's really blowing outside and it's raining. It hasn't stopped raining. It's not heavy, just light stuff. So I'm not overly concerned about whether the tent's going to leak or not. I know it's not going to. But it's cold. It's really chilly. Yeah. I've still got the heater going. You can see fan going up above as well and I've got Brucey here by my side here he is nice and chilled out lots of people driving past it's a bit weird because it's like 11 o'clock at night but there is a road there so I don't think anything else is going to happen Unless something happens in the middle of the night, I'll see you in the morning. Good night, everybody. Let me take a night to Bruce. Where's Bruce? Good night, Bruce. <laughs> he likes the fire. Good night, Brucey. Good night, everybody. Morning, Bruce. Morning. Morning. <laughs> oh, morning, everybody. It's morning. Bruce is happy. It's a new day. I had it chucked down last night. Um, it was quite loud. The rain. I was really surprised. Yeah, it's wet on the outside. Thank you, Brucey. Thank you. Morning. 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 Oh, my word. Oh, my. Oh. Hello. Oh. Ow, Brucey. Pause. Why did you pause? Ow. Oh. Beast mode. Oh, he's a happy boy. This is normal. Thank you for my kisses. So yeah, it's been howling all night. I think it stopped, but I slept really well. It's comfy, this bed, even without having my inflatable mattress on it. In fact, I'd say it's even more comfortable without that. It's more stable. Ugh, yuck. Ugh, having a bath in the morning with my pussy. My pussy bath. Oh. Morning. Oh, gosh. <laughs> all right, all right, 
behind me. It's very cool. It's a new day. New day. So yeah, there's, I'm not sure if we're gonna be making out. Where it's rained all night, it's wet outside. But bone dry in here. Seams have held up. They've done their job. Okay, lie down, Bruce, lie down. Um, I think spraying this tent, I might spray it next time. Just so the water beads off it, you can see there's water everywhere outside on the tent surface. Look at the size of this thing, it is an absolute palace. It's chilly, gotta get that heater on. That's early, what is it? 6.37. See on my EPIRB up there. It, again, there's, there's like one bar of signal here, not much. Yeah, okay, time to get up. Time to get up, Bruce. Good morning, Bruce. Oh, sorry. Oh, time to get up. <laughs> okay. coming out, Brucey. Oh, it's a new day, Brucey, a new day. Ooh. What a view to wake up to. So, the tent did very, very well. I think I will treat it when I get home because it sort of leaves what looks like a damp mark, but it's not, it's bone dry. Um, it is beading a bit, but not as much as if I treated it. All the guy lines are in. This window, I think, could be a weak point but it is dry. My worry is if wind, if the wind was strong enough, would it push water under this flat? But there's a drainage hole down here. That's very clever, yeah. It is dry and it was bone dry inside. Bruce, out of the fire. So cheeky. Yeah, the tent withheld all the rain and it did chuck down at one point last night. Yeah, it was really loud. It was quite a lot of rain. Which wasn't forecast. Um, and the wind was just non-stop all night shaking this thing. So you see these dark patches here. It's not come through, but it just, it just seems to be this material does this. And I think if I proof it myself with some decent, decent stuff, some rub instead of spray, um, rub it down, uh, really waterproof it, it'll be much better. Bruce, come on, do you want your breakfast? Okay, so, yeah, it withstood quite a battering last night. Happy with it. 
Oh, scene of the crime, empty bottle of wine. And it's what a mess inside. Look how huge it is. <laughs> so warm in here because I've got the fire cranking down there. Got my little fan going up there so it's circulating the heat. It is night and day difference in temperature here than out there, isn't it, Brucey? Right, let's get your breakfast, let's get coffee on the go. <sighs> Brucey, you want your breakfast? So good. All right, now, as I said, Brucey is on a vet diet at the moment. I can't have too much. And that is a measured portion of your special food. Go on then, Brucey, good boy. Yeah, he's on a very high protein special diet. He got a little bit of burger last night on top of his regular food, but he's not a big dog. He mustn't have too much. He's healthy. But if he's not exercising really, really hard, it's like coming up a mountain with me, then uh, you shouldn't be getting too much of this, this type of very high protein food. Have to be careful with that. Coffee time. So, uh, great view out. I'm looking out at the sea. It's beautiful. It's cold out there, but I've got the heater cranking right in front of me, which is very hot. So I'm actually getting hot sitting here. Got the heater going and the fan swirling the heat round in here. It's so nice. This is so different to my normal, <laughs> my normal camping experience. The last video, you probably all saw how miserable I was. In the snow, it was freezing cold. Didn't have a tarp. Uh, there was nowhere to mount it to, really. Uh, I'd gone up there with 25 kilo pack. It was brutal, it was freezing, it was snowing, and I was stuck in the tent. And believe me, there's nothing worse than just being stuck in a tent and you can't do anything. Whereas this tent is a palace. So I don't mind being stuck in here because I can still look out. As I've said before in a previous video, I wish there was a, a rain lip up here. Bruce, you're not going in the fire. No, no. Nope. I wish there was a rain lip that went along here. Um, so if it did rain, it would channel. Bruce, no, no. It would channel the water uh, one way or another, probably down there. Um, and I wish there was a way of securing that flap because it does flap about a bit. Doesn't seem to be any way to do that. There's no Velcro down there or anything else. So there's a couple of things that, that I would, for the third generation of this tent, I would uh, modify. But right now, this second generation, this 2021 version, is superb. I'm just being pedantic and finicky. But I know what I like and I know camping and I know tents and I know what this could be. Yeah. So just a little bit more tweaking here and there, and this would be the ultimate, ultimate family tent that can handle anything. All right, I need to sort my coffee out. Coffee bags, Jed's coffee bags, superb. He can't settle. Bruce, leave it. You're right on the guy line. Leave the guy line.
I'm going to have to take him on the beach soon for a WALK. Ah, this is the life. Oh, morning everybody. Thanks for joining us again on one of these. Such a beautiful spot. Here comes the rain. It's coming down. More than I thought. I need Bruce to come in. Bruce, come in here. Come lie down here. Come on. Come lie down. It's a good boy. There you go. Under the camera. Good boy. So the problem with this, <laughs> the problem with the tent is, yeah, it's quite an, it's not, I'd have to move all the way back in to stay out of the rain. As it is, the table is getting a little bit wet. So let me just move this. As long as I'm under the cover, I'm okay. Thank you, Bruce. And I'll give Bruce some room. Because he likes to lie and look out, especially in the rain. He loves to watch the rain. Anyone who knows him. There you go. Yeah, so I just need a, a rain flap up here or something. I don't know how I'm going to do it. At some point, I'll engineer something to go over the top of that. I think it would also be nice if um, they had a zipper coming up this side as well so that you could have like a roller door, just like this mesh door here rolls all the way up. It would be nice to be able to do that here and roll it up so you can zip it up and roll it up and just have it sort of halfway down or the other way down. So you can see out the top, but it's blocked at the bottom. Um, just a few more options on the vestibule. I also noticed there was a drop of water had come through the little lanyard holder here. Just one drop. <laughs> so that's not bad. It's where the seam sealant is. Got the thermarest, the thermarest, the thermocell going. You see the smoke coming off that? Uh, 
I don't know if you can make out the smoking. Because there's little bugs, little insects coming out now. So I've just got that, got that cranking. I noticed uh, a whole load of dead insects last night. So this actually must kill them. I thought it would just put them off, but actually it must kill them, which is great. So the rain is coming that way, coming across like this. It's just a little bit. It was just raining quite a bit a second ago, but now it's calmed down. It's all over the place. This is what it's like when you camp by a beach. You've got to be prepared for some pretty weird weather. He's such a good boy, look at him. There's a lot of things happening out here, a lot of birds, seagulls, things like that. So he's, uh, he's enjoying looking at those. I am enjoying the peace and quiet here, but the waves are something else. They're so loud. So you see, he's getting wet now because um, the wind is blowing the rain in a bit. But it's, it's tiny, tiny little drops. It's fun. It'll dry off in front of the heater, no problem. Oh, all the insects have gone. Okay, so that thermocell thing does work. I'm impressed. So he's watching the seagulls just floating out there. And they're, they're mesmerizing how they just glide. They don't do any, no effort at all. I'm gonna have my coffee and then take him down to the beach. And then we'll sort out breakfast after that. Hey, Brucey, we're down at the beach. Oh no, he's gonna go in. Just see our tent and car in the distance. Brucey! In the water? Now last time I was here I managed to walk all the way out there. But can't get to it now. It's high tide. See all the kelp has come in. Might be some seals in here somewhere, I'm not sure. It's windy. Oh, it's windy. <laughs> B 
Moose needs his airing. He did walking. It's a lovely spot. It's in the kelp, Bruce. Oh, he's eating the kelp. It's actually good for you. Seaweed, kelp. Come, Bruce. I'm probably about. It must be high tide because the water is right up here. Yeah, that's the high tide. I'm looking for penguins. I'm trying to see if there's any penguins around. Little, um, oh, here comes the water. Yeah, so in these rocks here, up here, there probably would be some blue penguins. Yeah, very cute. I was trying to see if I could see any bobbing around at all. Come on, Bruce, let's go. Bruce, come on. Hey, come on. So happy, look at him. Oh yeah, that's it. You pee it mark everywhere, yeah. So what I might try and do is walk all the way along the beach there, past the car and then up the hill, just up a bit there, back to the car. All right, let's get cracking. This is cold and I want my breakfast. Come on, Brucey. Right, I think it's time for some breakfast. It's a bit chilly, <laughs> but I've got the fire going here. That's nice. I don't know if you can see him. He's been pretty good. Let me sell that over there. So what have we got for breakfast? Well, I'm not overly hungry. Those burgers last night, oh my God, they really filled me up. So I think it's just gonna be a pancake this morning. I say just gonna be a pancake thing. You know, I like a big pancake. At least that's what she said. Okay. But I do have some blueberries to go in my pancake this time. I was gonna put some bacon bits in it, but those burgers were so filling last night that, yeah, I don't think so. Oh, I've still got so much food in here. I'm just so stuffed. I've got enough food for two nights. That was. I always do that, it's just in case. You know, like last time, as I said, if I'd been caught out and couldn't have got back or couldn't have got out of here, because apparently the road got damaged as well. So if I couldn't have got out, then um, yeah, I would have needed more food. So I always take a bit more. Turn this right down. Don't want to burn my pancakes.
Oh yeah. Now, is it gonna be burnt pancakes this time? Let's hope not. <laughs> it's gonna be a massive, massive pancake. There we go. All right. So some blueberries, blueberry pancake. Now how many blueberries do you put in before it becomes just too many blueberries? Have you ever seen the movie um, Casino? Yeah, in Casino with uh, Robert De Niro. And you get served a muffin. <laughs> There were no blueberries in it, whereas friend's muffin was full of blueberries. And then he said to the chef that he wants them to put in the blueberries by hand. And the guy complained that it would take ages. And he said, I don't care. So I'm going to put loads in. I'm sure there's a... <laughs> I'm gonna get some comments. There's meant to be some expert way of doing it. But I just, if I'm gonna put some blueberries in, I might as well put a lot in. There you go. So do you set the blueberries in? Do you push them down? I guess you do. Let's give it a go. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, we're laughing. So I've got that on quite a low heat. And it's already bubbling. All right, the mission <laughs> is to make the perfect pancake. To be really perfect, you would have um, I guess you'd have bacon on the side. But as I say, I had enough meat last night. She said. Car camping. Awesome. So you can get out there pretty much in any weather if you've got the right gear, if you've got the right tent. I thoroughly recommend this North Face Wawona tent. I would say, um, the only thing I would say you should do, and it would probably take two whole cans of spray to do it, but um, is set the tent up in your garden if you've got a garden. If you can do it, set the tent up in your garden on a very nice, dry, sunny day and douse the whole tent with waterproof spray. Um, and I'd go for a good one. I think 3M Scotchgard, they do a tent spray, which is pretty good. But you want something that's gonna have that beading technology that really binds to it. Some of them require two coats. I think this would benefit from that. Yeah, it would. And then just let it dry. And don't forget to do all of the fabric, all of the waterproof stuff, including in here as well. This bottom bit here and the outside, all of this. And I would pay particular attention to where the seams are under pressure. It, do, it hasn't leaked at all. Just this one little, one little droplet came through here, but I mean, I'm not 100% sure it did come through, or did I imagine it? It just felt a bit damp, but there's nothing there. And it's a very tight seal, a very tight seam. So I think it is 100% waterproof, definitely. I mean, it chucked down last night, and there's not a drop in here. It's bone dry. Also, get more pegs. You need more pegs. I'd buy a bunch more, like eight more pegs. 
uh, just for the extra guying out. There's a couple of other attachment points. There's just not enough pegs in here. It's perfect if you only need two guys, but if you're doing all the other guys, there's just not enough. Um, and I don't like the pegs that it comes with. So if you're gonna swap out all the pegs, then yeah, get proper big, I can't remember what we call them, MSR stakes, uh, powerful ones. And always remember to take a hammer with you and, and tap them in. Don't put your foot on them because you'll bend them straight away. Yeah, and then I think this will be perfect. I would be tempted to um, park a car, maybe one side, or put a couple of poles, get the big elephant poles and put a tarp up. But in the wind, tarps act like sails, so it, that's tricky to get right. All right, how are we doing on my pancake? It's getting there. And you see the rain is starting to come in again. So there is, I would say, a foot where it overhangs inside the vestibule here it comes down it's probably maybe longer maybe a foot and a half so just bear that in mind that this will be unusable space if you want to keep the door open which is why I think it would be great if they if this was a roll-up door uh, so that you could lift it up to here that would just give you more protection from the rain, but you'd still be able to see out. I mean, I could bring the door down to here. I'd still be able to see out, but I'd be protected from that rain coming in from up here. Um, there's no easy way to do that without having a big flap of material hanging down because this is all fixed here. So yeah, if there is a zipper here as well, that would be great. Yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't do that. and you could probably fit. Maybe not with the same cot beds that I've got, but if you were on the floor, you could definitely have four adults quite easily, side by side. Six would be a squeeze. Bit doable, but I'd say for four full-size people, this is totally doable, yeah. And that would leave you room at the end here as well. I saw a lot of people saying this is a motorcycle tent. I guess they think that you can park your motorbike and just leave it in the vestibule area here. I don't know that it's wide enough for a motorbike. Uh, I guess maybe it is. Mm, I guess it is. So yeah, this would be a good motorbike tent because it's not that heavy. What is it? Eight kilos, nine kilos. Um, and you've got tons of room. So if you are motorcycle camping by yourself, I don't think you could fit two motorbikes in here. That would be a squeeze, but definitely one. All right, I think it's gonna be time to flip. Flip our pancake. <laughs> I don't know about this. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> I flipped the pancake. Yeah, I did, Brucey. Oh, that looks even better than I thought it would look. Oh, now I'm ready for it. And this is gonna, this is gonna be filling. I've got my Steve's maple syrup, Canadian maple syrup. Mmm, I'm ready. Now, I have got some eggs, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Brucey have a couple of eggs. They're very good for him, very good for his coat. So I'll let him have a couple of these. And he has them just raw 
Oh, and he loves them. He loves the egg. Protein, fat, but yeah, it's really good for the coat. I've said it before, and I'm going to keep saying it. I need to get change the color of this grip. So I'll let him have that when I'm having mine. Right, how are we getting on here? Looks fluffy in the middle. Right, just give that another few minutes. I even turn it up a bit. And I'm going to want another coffee afterwards. So what does everyone think of this site? Do you prefer the sea, like that constant sound of the sea? Or do you prefer me camping by the rivers? Uh, so the last time I used this tent was by that river. We were very high up. It's a lovely spot. Um, or just bush, middle of nowhere, no river, no sea. Let me know in the comments which you prefer. My personal preference, and don't let this sway your comments at all, my personal preference is by the river. I love rivers. The sound of the river, yeah. It's just difficult when you're car camping to find spots that no one else is gonna turn up to. So I think this year I'm gonna to have to drive to some very remote areas. I've got the vehicle for it. Uh, to pitch up tent and just be away from everybody else. Yeah. I'm also tempted with a rooftop tent. So where the ground is just too rough to put a tent up. I am tempted with that. But that's a lot of hassle. It's a lot of weight to go on top of the car. It's a lot of faff to install it. They're very expensive. Um, plus I'd have to pick Bruce up each time I want to put him in there. He wouldn't just be able to run around him as he wants. And if the weather's bad, well, I guess you have an awning on the car uh, so you can sit out in that. But yeah, let me know in the comments. If you've got a rooftop tent or you've ever slept in one, I'd love to hear from you. See if, the, see if they're any good. Some people swear by them. But I, I think equally, some people absolutely hate them. Okay, how are we looking? Getting there. Ah, okay, one thing I've noticed is the blueberries is making it much slower to cook. Yeah, I guess it's all the moisture.
It's bouncing back now though, so that's the test for the pancake. Does it bounce back? Yep. Okay, this is ready. So I'm going to give Brucey his eggs. Hang on, Brucey. Just wait. And then I'm going to have my pancake. Go on then, Bruce. Good boy. <laughs> he loves his eggs. I don't know if you can see him properly. Okay. Lashings of maple syrup. What's worse than a dry pancake? Not a lot. Check that out. Blueberry pancake. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah. Okay, maybe I've put a bit too much maple syrup on. <laughs> Please be delicious. Well, the blueberries are making it fall apart. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, so the blueberries explode in your mouth and full of flavor. Yep, that was a good idea. Thank you to all the people that said put blueberries in there. Mm. I think bacon bits would work as well. Yeah, the salty and the sweet. He's finished his um, egg. And then, so after he eats, he does this thing. He looks around for more food. Doesn't matter how much. He is a bottomless pit. He is Nunu. If you ever see Teletubbies, it's an old TV show in the UK for kids. There was a vacuum cleaner in that that used to suck up all the custard called Nunu. We should have named him Nunu. Hmm. Delicious. Absolutely perfect. I'm so happy here. I'm just so happy in this tent. I really am. I would rather be in the bush though. Not that sort of bush, you know, bush. Um, with a river or something like that. Yeah. sound of the waves it's it's overbearing after a while it's like it's loud really loud maybe not picking it up on the microphone but it is really loud so you can't really hear the nature and the birds so i do prefer the forest yeah okay I'm going to take my time with this because this is massive.
That pancake was absolutely delicious. Oh, I am now really stuffed. So I've opened up the back window in the tent as well so I can see the sea straight out. Well, I've got a pretty good panoramic view here. Got my coffee, all is good. Thanks for coming along on this one. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Um, I do love doing these. As, as much as I do have a bit of fun when it, things go wrong, they are brutal. When, they, when it goes wrong, things can get brutal and I have to uh, cope. <laughs> it is nice to occasionally have a nice camp, just chill out. Now, one thing is, people say, oh, it'd be nice if you camped in sunny weather. The trouble is, in a tent, when the sun comes out, it's too hot. You cook in a tent. You'd have to be outside. Um, so I actually find colder weather, not much sun, a lot easier in a tent. So I will keep doing this. We're coming into summer now here in New Zealand. It's November. Uh, summer starts in December, Southern Hemisphere. So it's going to start warming up. But still, you see, New Zealand, you can get four seasons in one day. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, thanks, com thanks for coming along on this one. Thanks also again to uh, the sponsor of this uh, video, Squarespace. Um, it was very nice of them to approach me. Uh, if you've not used Squarespace before and you need a website, thoroughly recommend going to check them out. Um, if you uh, want to get a free trial and a discount, squarespace.com slash abcamping. Um, you won't regret it. It's a very easy system. I don't usually do these things. In fact, I've never done this, but I liked it. I liked using it. And um, so I had no qualms with them sponsoring to mention it. And the website will be launched soon and be able to see videos, be able to get the merchandise, and I might post some extra things on there that uh, I don't want to put on Instagram and I don't want to put on YouTube comments and things like that. So just more stuff about Bruce, more stuff about gear and um, what gear works, what gear doesn't work. Put all that on the website and just leave the YouTube channel to these long format videos leave the Instagram to just, you know, pictures of Bruce and self camping and things like that. So yeah, as soon as that website is ready, as soon as I finish doing it on Squarespace, um, then uh, I'll let you all know what the URL is. But Squarespace has been great, very helpful. To be honest, I've only needed, I think the help desk once. The rest of it is just plug and play and drag and drop. And you just, I want a picture here, you just drag it over and it's so easy. So thoroughly recommend that again. And thank you Squarespace for again, sponsoring this video. You know, last night was so comfortable, it felt like a normal bed. On the floor, if you're sleeping on the floor, even on an air mattress, it just doesn't feel the same. Being elevated a bit so you can sit up on it or you just feel like you're higher up, it just feels like a normal bed unless you sleep on a futon at home. Um, so I recommend getting a cot. I think you, in America you call them cot bed. Um, but yeah, framed bed with springs and some support and a bit of a mattress. I really recommend that. Rather than those blow up um, air beds that are off the floor like down here. I don't find them that comfy. Yeah, because it's air and it's no springs. So definitely recommend a cot bed. All right, I'm gonna finish my coffee and then I'm gonna pack up and I'll bring you back for packing up the tent. Again, thanks everybody. Okay, got everything packed up. So now I just need to deal with the tent, which if you know me <laughs> is the bit I hate the most. So it's a good job it's not raining. But everything is wet. Bruce, what are you doing? Bruce is having a good roll around in the muck. Okay, it's windy but not so bad. So 
it shouldn't take off if I take everything apart, take all the guys out. Okay, so the guys here are attached to the main tent. So what I'll do is leave these two end ones in, but take all the other guys out. See, I've already bent peg, one peg bent. Wow, starts moving straight away as soon as I took the guys out. It's amazing the job that the guys do. Okay. That's all the guys done for the outer. Now really, I should tie them up so they're all nice and neat. But there's no point because I've got to take this all apart again once I get home. All right, let's take the outer apart. Start with this end pole. I can't explain how thick these poles are. It's a shame I don't have a reference with me. But when you compare these to even the Hillberg, these things are massive. But that's, I guess, to be expected. Now remember to always look after your poles. Don't throw the poles on the ground. They damage easily. I don't think there's going to be a neat way to do this. Okay. We're getting there. 
I've got to put this all up again to dry it at home. I don't think there's going to be any way to fold this neatly while it's windy. So I might just have to try and roll it. Now, I don't necessarily have to put it back in the bag, but I might as well. So quite a lot of complaints about this bag because the bag opens at the top, not from the front. People complain about it. I prefer top stuff sack bags, like the MSR tents do that as well. Just makes it so much easier to get to everything. Pros and cons. So now you can really see the tent, what it looks like. Um, I don't know if this is meant, this pole is meant to go on the inside or outside. It seems like it's meant to be on the inside. It will rub a bit, but in summer, if you know it's not gonna rain, I would say you wouldn't need the outer at all. You've got a guide point there. You've got some extra guys in there that you can guide the top two here as well. And then that's pretty secure if you did that. It's not gonna go anywhere. You could even tie a guy around here if you needed to. So just win, but that's if you know it's not gonna rain. If you've got no rain on the forecast at all, then I think that would be quite nice. wouldn't take you that long to chuck the tarp over. You could just set up a tarp over top, actually. Um, right, let's get this down. Hope it doesn't take off. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just stake these two points here. It's one on each side, just at the base. Those points are for setting the tent up so it doesn't fly away. Yeah, you stake those out and then there shouldn't be a problem taking the rest of it apart. Shouldn't blow away with those two staked in. Okay, poles out. So reverse of how you set it up. I'm 
remember to push poles through, not pull them. Again, this is a lot easier with two people. Because the poles dig in the ground. But you don't want to pull them because you don't want to risk them becoming disconnected. And then sort of find the middle and start undoing it from there. Not at, not at one end, because you want to keep it balanced. ground is soaking. Now this is where two people would be handy because these poles are just going to dig in. I know I said don't pull them, but the last bit should be okay. There we go. Bruce! <laughs> Come on. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Hello, we're going home. <laughs> You're not going in the back there, it's full. You've got to come in the car with me. Yeah. He's so used to jumping up in the back. He's a clever dog. Oh, let me see if I can gently pull this through. When you're pushing it in, you want to be hard, she said. But when you take it out, be gentle, she also said. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. It was a layup. Okay. We are golden. Look how easy that is to dismantle with one person. Imagine how easy it is with two. Get this tent. <laughs> now, I know that this tent is very difficult to get. I've got a feeling it's sold out after my last video with it. I don't want to take credit for that, but I did see a lot of sales had gone through of it. I put a link to it on my Amazon page.
cage, my lynx. And yeah, quite a few got sold. You know, I sent a message to North Face asking them what they thought of the video. I just said, did you like it? Nothing, didn't hear anything back. Nothing, not a dicky bird. They don't care. They read it as well. Because I could see that they'd, it'd been read, but nothing, no response. Wow. Must be nice to be such a big company that you don't care. <laughs> that even people write in to compliment and say, hey, what did you think of it? it says a lot about a company. Maybe I was brought up differently, maybe I was trained differently. But I was always taught manners. If someone says something nice, you thank them for it. Just say thank you. I think I was, maybe had too much expectation of North Face. They're not the only company, some others. Some are good though, Hilleberg are good. Trangia always respond, <laughs> although the saga of trying to get a non-stick pan, they weren't interested in helping. <laughs> so they've all got their flaws. Wow, that was so easy. This is a good tarp. It's like a polythene. Very rugged, interwoven, very strong tarp. Very strong. But, I don't know who in the factory decided to fold this thing the way it was. It's impossible to get it back the way it came. Impossible. The folds go all over the place. Flipping idiot designed it, I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. I've tried so many times to fold this thing and it doesn't want to do it. <laughs> so if you're a tarp manufacturer, these sorts of tarps, please make it simple to fold up exactly the way it came. This is not the way it came. <laughs> right, everything neatly stacked. Sight is clear. Oh, all done. Everything is clear. Hey, my Brucey. Are you coming up? Oh, you want me to pick you up, you lazy thing? Oh, you're so lazy. Lie down. Lie down. It's okay. We're not going yet. Well, everyone, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. I know Bruce loved it here. <laughs> I loved this camp. Honestly, I love this tent. I do love this spot. What's not to love? Look at it. It's stunning. On a beautiful sunny day, it's gonna be spectacular here. Lovely. I might have to bring Anne here one day. So yeah, thanks for watching. We've got a nice drive out through the pine forest now on a rough road. It's like a gravel road. It's about uh, an hour and a half to get home. Lovely. Honestly, I'm so happy. Nothing went wrong. I had a great time. I was warm. This is nice camping. Camping with Tony and Bruce. Um, hope you like the new logo, AB Camping. Uh, Bruce is a little bit chubbier in that one. <laughs> He's a bit bigger. Um, again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And please do go check them out at AB Camping, and I'll get my website up as soon as possible. Thank you for everyone that's bought us treats. Thank you for everyone that's joined the YouTube channel. That's just awesome. And thank you for everyone who's bought merchandise, t-shirts, mugs, all sorts of things with Bruce's picture on and my logo on. Thank you all. <sighs> look at it. Just look at it. I am blessed to live in New Zealand, to have areas like this, to have a wife that lets me come out camping. Thank you, Anne. And my son, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. 
All right, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you from Bruce as well. We'll catch you next time. Time to go home. Come on then. <laughs>